What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far today. Um, getting into this episode of GH, listen, I love when Tracy and Lucy have scenes together. That shit be funny as hell. I, I thoroughly enjoy it every time they have a scene together. Um, I think now we're finally getting to the real. You know what I'm saying? Of why Tracy doing all of this. And I was shocked, but not shocked in a way, if that makes sense. Because I'm just like, I thought, I had a feeling that Tracy was going to do this again. But I thought she finally had enough of living in her father's shadow. And she finally gave up on ELQ and was like, I'm going to let y'all deal with this. But that's what this is all about. She wanted that 1% back that Lucy got, that vote and stop. Because she was not playing. She was like, "Um, our deal is contingent. I want that 1% that you got at ELQ. I want it. (laughs) I should have known because Tracy ain't never going to stop caring about ELQ. ELQ has been that woman's life for 40 plus years. That's all she she ate, slept, and breathed ELQ. Ain't no way she was going to give it up. You know what I'm saying? Even if she ain't make a power play for it, it was always going to be in the back of her body that she was going to want it. <sighs> um, so I had that feeling. I'm like, okay, so now we're getting down to it. And I don't know why Lucy's so surprised that Tracy won't let ancient history, you know what I'm saying, be history. It's Tracy freaking Quartermain. Tracy wouldn't give a damn if it happened in 1895. She's still going to tag your ass. She don't care. Tracy don't care how long ago it happened. You know what I'm saying? Because Tracy never wanted Lucy to have any piece of EOQ. You know what I'm saying? Never. So if this is her way of finally being able to get that 1% back and finally boot Lucy the hell out of that company for good, she going to do it. (laughs) Tracy don't care. She going to do it. So now that she done showed her hand, let's see what Lucy gonna do. You know what I'm saying? What's your next play, Lucy? What we gonna do? Because Lucy done made it abundantly clear. She ain't giving up shit. She was like, nope, I ain't giving you that 1%. She said, mm-mm, nope. So let's see who's gonna blink first, Tracy or Lucy. My money's on uh Tracy winning this one. Because I don't know. I mean, don't count Lucy out now. Lucy ain't no, she ain't no punk. But I don't know. You know, maybe Lucy is gonna go to, you know, toe-to-toe with Tracy. It's going to be fun to watch. Um, so moving on from that. And I wonder, before before I go on, I wonder who the hell Tracy was on the phone with, though. Because she was like, oh, our mutual uh, friend or whatever just left. I'm like, who is you on the phone with, girl? Like, who is she working with on this? Because whoever it is, they on their way back to poor Charles. Wait a minute. And then she said, coming for a visit. And we know Blair is coming back tomorrow. So is Tracy and Blair in on this? Hmm. Hmm. Tracy and Blair. I'll be damned. Um, that that would be crazy. I don't know, but that'd be that'd be wild. So moving on from that, I was a thousand percent on Maxie's side today. Thousand fucking percent. Um. But first of all, why do they always dress Maxie like this? Maxie is such a fashionista. Like, what the hell has been going on with wardrobe for her the last few years? The last couple of years, they've been dressing her in this these outfits that do not befit the character. I'm like, no. Get that frock off of her. <laughs> the fashionista don't dress like this. Like, what is this? Um, I'm just saying. But um, anyway, I was, I was definitely on Maxie's side. Because... BLQ could dress it up however she want. Oh, you know, my grandmother was blackmailing me. I totally agree with Maxie. Okay, that was some high school shit. Because what her and Chase was going through was definitely some high school musical type stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I agree with Maxie. Like, you sitting there going to put the company at jeopardy, put employees' jobs at jeopardy, all of their livelihoods at risk, all because you you can't be honest with your man. I was saying that throughout the whole storyline. Like, girl, take the blackmail away from Tracy and just fucking tell Chase the truth. I've been saying that. And now Maxie is saying the same thing. Why didn't you just tell people? You know what I'm saying? Like, why didn't you come to Maxie? And y'all could have helped figure this out. Oh, I thought I could handle Tracy. Obviously, you can't. Obviously, you cannot, sweets. And now you don't put everybody's livelihood in freaking jeopardy. I don't blame Maxie for being pissed. Like, she got kids to take care of. Maxie ain't got no million dollar trust fund. You know what I'm saying? She got to work to take care of her and her children. And she got three. You know what I'm saying? Like, she got to do what she got to do. You know, she she's not a quarter main. You know what I'm saying? She's not like BLQ. 
because BLQ sitting there talking about, oh, I'll work for free. See, you can afford to work for free because you're a freaking quarter man. Maxi don't have that option. Any work Maxi does has to have a paycheck attached to it. So I, I, I can't fault Maxi at all because I would feel the same exact way. Like, you fucking want my coin because I'm the same way. I don't like nobody messing with my coin. Don't mess with my paper. You know what I'm saying? You can do whatever you want. Don't mess with my paper. I'm just saying. So I ain't mad at Maxi for, you know, firing her. It needed to be done. You know, BLQ could sit there, I'm going to fix this. It, it's unfixable at this point. What can you possibly do? I don't see how she could fix it. How? It's done. You know, like, what are you going to do? Unless you're going to find some type of way to get Tracy to back off this lawsuit, I don't see how you can fix it. I'm just saying. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. I enjoyed the scenes between Sonny and Carly. Um, I'm glad Sonny confided in Carly and stuff like that. And they working together on this thing. My only thing about it is I could tell when Nina, I think when Nina finds out that he's confiding in Carly and telling her all the details about what's going on and he don't tell Nina none of this. I have a feeling when Nina find out about this or if she finds out, she's going to be pissed. She's going to be pissed. You know, I can see it now. She's going to be mad about it. She's probably going to put up a front like she not, but deep down she's going to be boiling. You know what I mean? But that's what she has to understand. Carly and Sonny are always going to be a part of each other's life. I don't give a damn how mad they are at each other. They always have each other back. And even Sonny told Carly that. You know what I'm saying? When the chips are down, we got each other back. That's what I do like about Sonny and Carly together. It's that loyalty factor. Because you can't buy fucking loyalty like that. You know what I'm saying? People got employees out here that's only a little bit loyal because of a paycheck. But then when somebody offered them a bigger check, oh, they're going to betray your ass for that bigger bag. You know what I'm saying? Carly ain't that. She don't betray Sonny. Even when she's had multiple opportunities to betray his ass, she hasn't done it. To save her own ass from going to prison, she could have threw him under the bus. She did not do it. That's loyalty right there. That's that shit you cannot write a check for. I don't care how rich you are. That's that solid shit right there. I I, I mess with anybody that, that that's that solid of a friend or whatever the case i respect it you know what i'm saying i might not like carly too much but i respect the shit out of the loyalty factor oh i respect that um and i'm glad her and sonny are gonna work together on this thing because it is mutually beneficial for him and for her because whoever this you know boss is even though we know who the boss is is gonna be dangerous for their family so they gotta band together on this thing you know and drew is in a position to find out and i'm glad sonny's figuring it out like whoever the boss is they gotta be in pentonville then so Austin went to go see the boss. Who did he go visit? And I'm pretty sure it shouldn't take them long to figure that out. You know, because um, once they see Cyrus name or they find out Cyrus is seeing Austin or whatever, it ain't going to be hard to put two and two together right then and there. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. <sighs> Mason. Oh, he is such a creep. Um, I hate every time he pull up on Ava because he gives me such a creep vibe every time he around her. Um, at the end of the day, Mason, go sit down somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, please go sit. I am so tired of him with the threats. Oh, you betrayed us. You this, that, and the third. Ava don't owe you shit at the end of the day. And Ava didn't betray you. And I love how Ava put it to him. At the end of the day, you hired incompetent ass people. Dummy. You hired incompetence. Because Betty was incompetent. Like, let's be real. Um, it wasn't nothing about her that was trustworthy. And I'm going to be honest with you. I love how Ava left that voicemail for Austin, letting him know, like, if she go down, she taking um, Austin ass with her. I love it because it's about time. Ava need to boss up on all they asses. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop letting Mason and Austin pull the strings on this thing. Boss up at the end of the day. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. So anyway, um. When Jordan went to go see Mac, I ain't like how she was questioning Mac about what's going on. Oh, the feds arrested Sonny and didn't let him go. When we got two mental patients on the loose, they escaped. What are we doing? Like, what's going on? Excuse me? <laughs> First of all, the feds situation with Sonny ain't got nothing to do with the PCPD because that wasn't a PCPD operation. That was the feds operation. Not, you know. It had nothing to do with Mac. Mac wasn't in charge of that. So if you want to know what's going on with that, you need to go talk to the feds, not Mac. And I agree with Mac. As far as Sasha and Cody escaping go, they're not mental patients, number one, and Cody did not kidnap her. So Jordan need to go sit down with all that. Oh, well, we still need to find them anyway. 
Jordan, go go sit. Let Matt handle this, please, and thank you. Um, obviously, Matt knows what he's doing. I didn't like how the feds was trying to insinuate that that Dante was giving and feeding Sunny information. I was like, now we know that shit ain't true. Like Dante is not gonna compromise his job for Sunny, not in that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see him wanting to do all that. Like he loved his father. They came a long way, but doing that, I don't see it. Um, so the, for the feds to insinuate that now they basically want to keep eyes on Dante now. Um, speaking of Dante. I'm glad him and Sam was putting all the pieces together like they was comparing notes they was talking and stuff and putting the pieces together where Cody, Sasha, and, and Gladys was coming from um, as far as it pertains to them but I see why Sam wants to keep Dante out of this because it does seem like he's compromising himself and his badge for this you know what I'm saying like at the end of the day uh, I mean until they get themselves cleared of any legal charges Dante just needs to not want to hear it you know what I'm saying like just let Sam handle this one, you know, stay out of it. Cause you now have the feds looking at you thinking that you're corrupt or whatever. So you don't want to give them another excuse to believe that you are corrupt because if the feds get wind of all of this and they be like, Oh, well Dante knew about what Sam was doing and he didn't lock her up in this, that and the other, they're going to start thinking that you are corrupt. So I think Dante should just sit this out. Let Sam handle this and not ask too many questions. Um, I like that. They're open and honest with each other about stuff, but you know, as a cop, if I'm listening, you know, if you did some illegal shit, I don't want to hear it. I la 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 la. <laughs> like, I don't want to hear it. Handle it. Leave me out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even want to know. Um, I think it's too risky to have Sam take Dante to the cabin. I think it's way too risky for that right now. Um, I mean, I know she trusts Dante, but they don't know who's keeping tabs. You know, like, they don't have a clue that the feds are suspecting him of being dirty. So, I think it's best that he just sit back. Um, I'm glad that Cody finally told Sasha the truth. You know, that Gladys is paying Dr. Montag. Because all this stuff started happening once that man gave her them pills. That's when she started having these issues. So, I'm glad that, you know, she knows the truth. And hopefully she believes Cody. And she cut her losses with Gladys. And hopefully she try to go the legal route with Gladys. I hope she files a lawsuit against Gladys. I hope she files criminal charges against that witch. I hope so. You know, because I'm ready for Sasha to get her life back on track. You know, because seeing Dr. Montag and what Gladys did to her is disgusting to see that. You know, so I hope they get theirs in the long run. Because I know for a fact, if she do file criminal charges against Gladys, I know Dante would be happy as shit to put the cuss on that witch. Because Dante was pissed off when he found out that, you know, Gladys could have been a part of this. He was pissed because he ain't never liked nor trust Gladys anyway. Um, but to find this out, I know he gonna love putting the screws to that witch. But um, anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. And I will see you all later. Peace.